getting together. I'm talking to you. You've got to learn to look after yourself, Spender. Daichi withdraws his statement and leaves you to go to court and say that you alone attacked Hamid. Think about it. I'll be back. Hello, Mrs. Lamont. Oh, excuse curlers, Mr. Patch. Oh, uh, just returning Kate's key. Oh, I. Could I uh, ask you a favour? Mm. Kate's back. Um, I'm afraid I've had to give her some bad news. Of a confidential oh. nature. Oh. I was wondering if you could pop in and see her this afternoon, see if she's all right. Yeah, of course, so I'll be delighted. Thanks, Mrs. Lamont. Uh, Mrs. Lamont, could I ask you to tell me something? I seem to remember a few months back, Kate said that you look after the dog when she goes away. Yes, we do. Do you know if Johnny took it for a walk last night? Johnny? Yes. No, dear, we don't like dogs. And Sutty knows it. Kate does too, that's why she leaves the dog with us. But last night, you didn't take her for a walk, nine-ish? No. Oh. Sutty were with us. Killed up in front of fire all evening. Joe, it's George here. Can I speak to the boss, please? Urgently. Yes, you wanted to see me. I want to withdraw my statement I volunteered. Do you want to put that in writing? You're not obliged to say anything. Don't give me all that bull. I want to tell you what really happened. I'm not carrying can on my own. Who attacked Mr. Hamid and caused his injuries? Johnny Collins. Now you're thinking properly. This is a copy of a statement made by Deitches. Yeah, well, I want to put my side of it as well, then. You're not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so, but anything you say will be taken down in writing and may be given in evidence. In addition, we know you didn't take your dog for a walk. It was at your neighbour's house all night. Bastards. That's it, then. You're not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so, but anything you say will be taken down in writing and may be given in evidence. One to the Wallies, sir. Hmm. Oh, come on, sir. I was the arresting officer. CID gets more than its fair share, and often through the arrests of my lads. Well, it looks like more than just this robbery, Jean. Descriptions of our three young thugs approximate descriptions on two other jobs. So we'll be getting together some identification parades. I can't help thinking about George Parrish. Poor George and poor Mrs. Collins. We ought to see her and get a statement from Mrs. Lamont about the dog. Well, if you have no serious objection, Jean, I'll go now and talk to both of them. Certainly, sir. Oh, I'll join you, sir, if you have no serious objections. Look, I can't whip something else together, you know, Jean. That's a bit of a jar of March feel about it, having the same supper as dinner. I want the stew. It tasted great. You know, you always praise the highest those meals I've just chucked together in the pan, never my colouring in masterpieces. There's a moral in that. Is that supposed to be a witticism, dear? No, I don't think so. I don't feel very witty. Rather a depressing scene. What's George Parrish's sister like? Older. Not a well lady. It depressed me to think whether I might end up like her if ever I lost you. Oh, that's a charming thought. Well, I've been thinking a lot about the future, Tom. Oh, so you've made up your mind about Brahms Hill, then, have you? I want to go. Well, I bet you lose Hartley. 
And when that's sunk in, you'll be a very unhappy lady in Spain. Don't overestimate the situation. Don't underestimate me. If, when I've had six months breathing space, time to think, I decide I want to come back here, I will dig my heels in. I will get back to Hartley. I never underestimate you, dear. Just agree with Helen, that's all. Me, a woman like you, should never have been given Hartley in the first place. Bound to lead to problems. You be serious. Well, I have thought about it. The only conclusion I can come to is if you want it enough, it's probably right. With the cheap Porsche somewhere else, don't give me a lot of stick, will you? Right. Anyway, it'll give us an excuse for tonight. Excuse for what tonight? Well, I thought we might open a bottle of Bulgarian type Beaujolais. While we're drinking it, we can decide whether we're celebrating or starting the process of drowning your sorrows to come. You can do the celebrating, I'll practice drowning. <laughs> right, dear, certainly, dear. Hey, we do share another major problem. We're completely out of booze. You'll have to go to the off-license. Just walking home, Mum. I'll give you a lift. Well, I was wanting the fresh air, Mum. There's no shortage of fresh air in Hartley. I'll drive you. Thanks. <laughs> I haven't told my wife yet, Mum, about Johnny. She's going to be as stunned as cake. I was just working out how I'll put it to her. She's been over at her mother's the last couple of days. The old lady's not well. Of course, she's upset about that. And now this. You and me both, George. What's that, Mum? We both have our problems. How's that? There's a place going on the junior command course. I'm going to apply for it. There's an excellent chance I'll get it. What does that mean, Mum? I may shortly be leaving Hartley for six months. I may not return as inspector. Well, that's a hell of a shame, Mum. If you don't come back, I mean, we'll really miss you. Do you think you'd be better off then, Mum? I have to think about the future. There's always decisions got to be made about that. You're not suddenly going to disappear in a flash? No. Worried about that. I mean, we'll want to organise a proper farewell do. Maybe several. We'll all want to buy you drinks, so you'll owe us quite a few rounds. And that way your conscience will bring you back. I shall miss you all, and Hartley. But that's positive, because if they do decide to try and post me somewhere else and I decide I want to come back here, you lot and this town will be one hell of an incentive to put up a fight to get back. Hey, George? Yes, ma'am. 